Well, let's get some more reaction to the emissions reduction plan unveiled by the Liberals today. Caroline Briette is the National Policy Manager for Climate Action Network Canada. It's a coalition of more than 100 organizations across the country, and she joins me from Vancouver. Uh, Caroline Briette, good to see you again. Uh, first of all, what's your reaction to the plan unveiled by the federal government today? Today's uh, emissions reductions plan is definitely the most detailed and transparent climate plan a uh, Canadian government has ever tabled. Um, however, climate change is a team effort, and unfortunately, we're seeing some sectors of the economy not doing their fair share of the effort. Uh, which sectors uh, would you point out? I'm thinking specifically of the oil and gas sector. So overall, this plans ask the Canadian economy to reduce emissions by 40% below 2005 levels by 2030. Mm -hmm. The oil and gas sector, one that, as we know, has continuously expanded not only its production, but its emissions, um, is asked to only reduce its emissions by 31%. When one sector of the economy does not um, shoulder its fair share of the, of the mitigation effort, um, it's, it means that other sectors, other consumers, other workers have to pick that up, unfortunately. Yeah, we should point out, so because people are going to hear different numbers from this report today, 31% uh, reduction from 2005 levels, 42% from 2019 levels, just so people are clear on the kinds of information they see and that, uh, that they're hearing about this. Uh, what more should be asked of the, uh, of the oil and gas industry and uh, beyond what's been asked of it today? Well, recent research by the Pembina Institute showed that with existing technologies, the sector could reduce emissions by 45 percent below 2005 levels by 2030. Um, Climate Action Network Canada, we ask the Canadian government to reduce emissions by at least 60 percent um, in 2030. And so we're, we would ask the oil and gas sector to shoulder at least um, that, uh, that same uh, target. Hmm. Uh, so, you know, what's what's missing from here, uh, there's a promise to negotiate and, and you, many organizations have called for a hard cap on emissions from the oil and gas sector. That's not in this plan. Uh, what is is a promise to negotiate um, and consult a, about a hard cap. What's your response to that approach? I think what we're seeing in, in the plan is that there are details that still need to be um, communicated in terms of the implementation of new measures. So um, it's it's good to see, as I, as I mentioned earlier, a plan that has greater detail, it has modeling by sector, um, but we would have liked to see for each measure um, which minister is responsible on what timeline, what with what emissions reductions are accruing from that measure and with budgetary um, allocations. The good news is that there will be a progress report in 2023 as required by the Net Zero Emissions Accountability Act. And so that will be an important moment to offer uh, some of that important implementation detail. Right. I, I mean, every other climate plan unveiled since uh, 1988 uh, by various various federal governments has failed to meet its target. So uh, none of them um, have taken the action required to hit those targets. But do you, uh, how likely is this plan to succeed based on what you're seeing? The reason Canada has historically missed every single target it has set for itself is not because those weren't the right targets. It was because of a lack of uh, climate governance. Um, last summer, the Net Zero Emissions Accountability Act was adopted. It's not a perfect legislation, but it offers some really strong foundation to bring accountability in terms of climate objectives to Canada. And so this first plan tabled under the Act brings more clarity, it brings more certainty, it brings more transparency, but it will have to be iterated upon in, um, in next versions uh, so that we get even more detail. And a climate plan is a work plan. Mm. So the more detail we have about who is responsible for what, on what timeline, um, with specific um, impacts that are expected, the better that is, because we, uh, we, we manage what we measure and we measure what we manage. There, there's also uh, no plan in this plan for transitioning oil and gas workers and their communities, as the government has promised to, to deliver. Um, how, how, how big of a, of a missing link is that in the whole conversation about getting to the targets? Fighting the climate crisis, um, it, 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 a big part of that is reducing um, greenhouse gas emissions, but that's not the whole picture. 
fighting the climate crisis is a question of justice, and it requires a complete social and economic transformation. We've seen a little bit of language in the plan about these kind of job creation right. uh, and, and equity considerations that are related um, to climate change. But the, the just transition strategy, for instance, um, that this government is, is planning to um, adopt was unfortunately lacking in this document. All right, Caroline Bouillard, Climate Action Canada. Thank you so much for your time today. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me.